appreciate that. Let's talk a little bit about the book for a moment because I think that anyone watching this video uh, are going to be looking for some reasons why they'd want a book like this. So this book called You Gotta Have Balls. How'd you come up with that name? Yeah, let's talk I mean, about how'd you come up with that name? I know there's a million balls around this place, but... You know, my mother was, uh, you know, these, that was just 40 years ago, you know, you were, you, at that time you were allowed technically to hit your kid, you know, you would get put in jail, you know, my mother was not a hitter. And she always pointed that out, says, you know, all those friends of yours, when they do something wrong, you know, their parents hit them, I would never hit you. But she was an elbower, and I, I pinch her, you know, she says, you can't put me in jail for elbowing you. You can't go to the judge and say, I elbowed you. You can't go to family court with that. But she, so she would, you know, when, when we point out things... And we, we ran into a lot of people that she claimed were spineless. She, my mother's the one who gave me the, you know, you gotta have balls with an elbow, you know, or a pinch. Oh, you know, you gotta have balls. Look at that guy over there. Look at that, look at that situation over there. Have some balls, you know. So I kind of, and really the book is a dedication, and I think, you know, really a thank you letter, really to my mom, who really has given me so much guidance and and, and, and so much direction. A businesswoman probably way ahead of her time. Uh, no doubt, a woman that was definitely doing things before women, you know, people forget, but, you know, a woman owning a business, a woman, you know, doing some of the things that my mother did. My mother held regular card games in her house and was the orchestrator and, you know, took her vig. Uh, she was, you know, quite a character, to say the least, and anybody who knew her would know that, but probably the most intelligent woman I've ever met. And that's what the book and that how I came up with the title, really, was an expression my mother always used. You know, don't be afraid to take risks, be fearless. You know, uh, go with your gut, you know, put your head down, don't be afraid. Well, I think also what people have said, that those who've read the book already, and I was reading it the second time, had to give it up to someone who said, hey, I want to read this. But it seems to be the anecdotes, the stories, and a lot of those stories could really never happen today. Like the things that happened to you before there was a memorabilia market and your relationship with Mickey Mantle, and those things just can never be scaled. They could just never be duplicated. And I think that's part of that. On top of it being to the younger kids here who've read it, this is like a college education within one book. You know, well, just I, I, I think it's simple. You know, I think a lot of people go through, I'm not the first person, I don't think there's any business problem that can't be fixed or hasn't been fixed. Certainly uh, there's a spiritual solution for every business problem or any problem you have in life. And certainly there's a, you know, I don't think any problem we're going to face these days hasn't been dealt with already on some level. The question is, you know, can you relate to someone else's problems to help you get to the answer? Um, I recall, you know, a story. I remember going to my mother. There was some of the older kids going to a Yankee game, and this book does have a little Yankee, you know, a little touch to it. <laughs> but you know, I went and I said, "Mom, you know, the older kids are going to the game. I'd be the fourth. Would you mind if I go?" I said, well, "I need some money." She gave me five dollars. In those days, you know, we always sent the dollar fifty seats, the obstructive view. We want to sit down low. You see most of the game. You wait in the middle part of the game, you go get a ticket outside when people are leaving early, and you sit in the person's seat. It's a no-brainer. Well, on our way, we go pick up the tickets. One of the older kids said, hey, guess what? I got these seats four rows over the dugout. And they were $4. Now it's 15 cents for the train each way. Hot dog, soda. You know, I had like 40 cents change. So what's <laughs> irrelevant about that story is we went over the dugout the first time in these eyes, right from the beginning. The batting practice got that close to the field, got that close to the players. I remember that feeling, the relevance, how pumped up and fired up I was. And sure enough, John, uh, Joe Pepitone comes over and we get his autograph and he starts bugging Tom Tresh to come over and give us his autograph as well. I just remember I was fired up. Incredible. So I get home and I tell my mother how excited I am to show her the autographs on the scorecard. And the first thing she says is, where's my change? <laughs> wow. I said, well, Mom, you have to understand wow. that you know, that we had this unbelievable opportunity. She said, we have my change. When I told her that I spent four dollars on a seat, which is kind of funny because I do sit in some pretty good seats these days, <laughs> nowhere near four dollars. <laughs> she wanted to know where a change was, she found it. She went and found those older guys and she, she went, I mean, you could hear, I could hear her screaming still today wow. uh, to get that change. But uh, it, was a, it was a great moment. It was, a, it was kind of, it was my destiny to sit in those seats, get those autographs that day. I never forget that feeling to be able to sit in those kind of seats and get those autographs, and also just to remind me of you know the value of a dollar, which is always important. Which I think is important regardless inflation, recession. It's important to understand the value of a dollar, and I've always been a fan of you know the best way to make a million dollars is to figure out how to make one dollar, and then when you make one dollar, figure out how to make two. So this a lot of this echoes throughout the book, and you know sometimes you just remember that. Uh, you know, $4 sometimes could be a lot of money to spend on a seat. 